Hi everyone, welcome to Art on the Creek. Today, we are gonna test some pencil sharpeners to find out which one is the best for portables. These are the ones that I have. And which one is the best for not so portable? Are you ready? Let's get to it. Well, to get started, I've already been working a little bit. Um, I've been using the Derwent pencil sharpener. So let me show you the features of that one. We'll move these other guys out of the way. And at any rate, I bought the Derwent pencil sharpener because it was recommended to me by several colored pencil artists. And it's a nice sharpener, very easy to clean out. Uh, the shavings are all collected here. It's adjustable for whatever pencil size you want to use. You just pull and put the pencil in. I'll show, I'll demonstrate it in just a moment. And um, if you wanted to open it to see what, if it does get clogged up, you just turn this towards you and there's these little notches right here that fit in there. So you can take out the mechanism. And taking that mechanism out is really super simple. And then um, if a lead's gonna, a lead is gonna break off, it's gonna be in that little space right there. And you can just take a pair of tweezers or something and pull it right out. Um, there is a little hole in the bottom underneath the tray and that's designed for a clamp that comes with it if you wanted to clamp it to your desk. I don't know where my clamp is and I don't recall mine coming with one, but it must have. Um, you know, I've had this one for a long time, so I don't know. I just, I never use the clamp, but the, but it is there. And um, you should be able to get into this one for somewhere under $35. Um, they're, they're really, really nice. It'll sharpen uh, an extra long super point, just like it says, and it will handle pencils up to eight millimeters in diameter. These are my guinea pigs for our experiment. And the first one I want to test is this Derwent. So I've already sharpened a couple. Let me show you how beautifully these create a point that is just wonderful. And you can really get in there with a fine, uh, a fine point. And as long as the pencil fits in this barrel, this grip will hold it. So that's really a plus. The blade is a high performance steel. However, in my research, I did not find that uh, you could get a new part to replace that blade. But for under $35, I think uh, it's not a bad deal at all. So I've pulled out that orange pencil there that is in need of sharpening. And let's just go through the steps and see how this works. One thing of note is that when those two levers on the top are pinched together to make the teeth mechanism work to hold the pencil, they can leave an indentation on your pencil shaft. But let me show you how it sharpens. It has an automatic stop. So you, you squeeze this together and pull it out, put the pencil in until it won't go in anymore. And then, sorry, the camera's probably gonna shake here, but I'm gonna turn this and when you feel it slip, that's when you know that you've reached the end. There, I felt a slip and there you go. We've got a perfect pencil. I think this is one of the best pencil sharpeners. I will try to put a link to it. There are so many retailers that carry this pencil sharpener. I honestly don't think you're going to have any trouble finding it. This one is a great pencil sharpener and I love having it. So for another studio test, let's go ahead and open this Afmat one. This was also recommended to me by a color pencil artist. This is called the Afmat Long Point Pencil Sharpener on Amazon and it is the model PS10, like it says there on the box. I really like this one. Same thing, it'll hold the eight millimeter pencils. The price on this one is very appealing. It retails for uh, 20, oh, sorry, I just had it. Let me move it back to the screen here. Um, retail price is $25.99, but right now it's on sale on Amazon for $15.99 on the date that I'm recording this. So you should be able to uh, to find this just about anywhere. I would uh, start on Amazon and then go from there. It's the Afmat. It's a brand I've seen around, so I don't think you'll have a lot of trouble finding it. Um, it'll go from six millimeters to 8.2 millimeter pencils. So that is uh, one step up above the Derwent. Oh, and it comes with a tool. Have to keep that and label it somewhere. Put it back in the box for now. Comes with instructions. 
So this one has this adjustable bit here where you can make your pencil point duller or sharper depending upon this adjuster knob. And it just, it clicks so you can turn it like you would a toaster for how, how brown you want your toast. We're gonna put it on as sharp as it goes for now. And let's see, here's a window in the back to see your pencil shavings. This one also has the window in the back. This hole in the bottom here, and there's one on the Derwent also, that's where the bracket to clamp it to the desk fits in on the Derwent. And the Derwent one supposedly, as I said, comes with that bracket. It looks vaguely familiar on the picture that I saw, but I don't, I have no clue where I put it. This one did not come with any kind of uh, bracket, but it did come with that hex tool. And I have yet to find why you need that hex tool. My guess is it has something to do with the bracket, which again, it didn't come with. So that bracket is a, a device that clamps it to the desk. And the Derwent is just a bucket to collect the shavings, but this one has an added feature of sandpaper on the inside. So I will show you how that works. So let's do our first pencil with this one. And again, this is the Afmat pencil sharpener. We'll try this yellow one here. So we're just gonna put that inside and it fits in just fine. I don't think you can see this on camera, but there are little grippy uh, rubber knobs in there. So this one won't leave the teeth marks on your pencil. So that is a plus. Uh, here is an example of a, a pencil that's been sharpened by the Derwent and has left some little marks on it. So this one has like little silicone or rubbery things in there. I don't know what they're made of, but it will hold your pencil smoothly. You can kind of feel that resist when you push it in. Um, but in looking at it, I can see, I don't think you guys can see, but it's, uh, it's definitely a soft material. So let's give it a shot. I've got it set for as sharp as it'll go. Pencil turns a little. There's that release, that kind of auto stop. At this point in the instructions, uh, which I read online, but not with any of the packaging material, it did say to turn the handle toward you a little bit before you release the pencil. However, I just pulled the pencils out without doing that. And as you can see, we still have an amazingly beautiful point and uh, it didn't damage anything. Then you open this up and you take this and get it to where exactly where you want it with the sandpaper. So if that is something that appeals to you, this one is frankly incredible. Here's a little scrap of watercolor paper. Let me zoom in. So this is the pencil that was sharpened with the AF mat. And I know yellow is not the best color to show you this test, but I feel like using a fairly light pressure. I feel like this pencil is going to be just fine. I don't feel like it's going to break. The, um, the one that was sharpened with the Derwent feels just as sturdy. So let's do a, let's do a darker color here with the, with the AF mat so that you can see. We'll go with the dark green. So you just put it in and I'm holding the pencil sharpener zoom back out so you can see it. I just put it in and I just hold the sharpener and I do have it set for that sharpest note again. And there when it slips, the pencil also stops rotating. So that's another good visual cue for you. And I'm going to pull it out carefully. That's just incredible. You could get into some really tight spaces with this if you're coloring, if you are, uh, a coloring book enthusiast, or even if you are um, a professional artist, a hobbyist, this pencil sharpener, I believe, might be an excellent investment. Let's play around with it just for a minute because I, this one, I don't want to say it's a one-trick pony because it certainly sharpens many different uh, widths of pencils. The downside, I would say, are the teeth. And I have gotten leads to break off in here before just from normal use. So that does become a frustration, but it's very easy to clean. So this one so far, comparing the two, I give this one a nine out of 10. And this one, gosh, this one might just be a 10 out of 10. Let's see, let's move the adjuster here. Let's do it to about mid, mid range. And let's see what that looks like. I've got the little, there's like a little pointer. I've got that pointing at the top. Uh, let's try this guy, he's pretty dull. 
putting it in. Just sharpening it until I feel that slip. There we go, and it stops turning. So there's the mid-range. It really does taper it, but then you're left with this blunt end. Here's the comparison between the two. You can see that it just kind of stops and gives you a little bit more of a blunt end, which is really nice if you wanted to uh, use that sandpaper and use that to your advantage. So once again, I feel really confident. This feels really sturdy. I thought that it would be uh, have a feeling that it would break instantly, and it certainly doesn't feel that way. Let's go back to that yellow one and see if we can do just a little bit more of a blend here. We'll zoom in. This is cold press watercolor paper. I'm pressing fairly hard. I ended up testing a few pencils with this and making some comparisons between the, the blunt and the, the sharp and the medium. They're all really, really nice. And with that added benefit of the sandpaper in there, you could have as much lead exposed as you like or as you feel comfortable with. So it can accommodate uh, different pressures of hands, different styles of artists. Um, I'm sorry the little comparison footage is out of frame here. That's why I've got this sped up. But with that added sandpaper, I mean, this this is really the one that does everything. So uh, let's get back to it and uh, see where we're at next. All right, so with the AF mat, and again, this is model PS10. Here is the sharpest, the mid-range, and the blunt. I This is very subtle in the changes, but I can see them pretty clearly with my naked eye. So even if you went with the blunt, you could use that uh, sandpaper feature on the inside to get it to a point. So this is pretty incredible. I'm impressed with this one. In the information about the AFMAT online, it does say it will sharpen 3,000 times. Um, and both blades, this one and the one uh, with the Derwent, the blade of steel, and it's that uh, helical, is that what they call it? The, the spiral type blade. So pretty comparable, but the AFMAT has a few key points that are just a little bit better than the Derwent. When I was wobbling there, what I was uh, showing you was how the, the AFMAT is plastic, it's lightweight, and it does wobble around a lot. The Derwent has more weight to it because it's made from uh, what feels like steel. Uh, that appeals to me more. So if you could put a steel body on the AFMAT, then it would be the unicorn that I'm looking for, but I will take it. This has been a really great test. Also on that AF mat, that little click knob where you can change it from very sharp to kind of blunt, it has 11 settings. So that's pretty incredible. Before we test some other manual uh, pencil sharpeners, I wanna stay in the, the ones that we use in studio. Here's the beast, my buddy, Big Blue. Big Blue's official name is the Bostitch Office Quiet Sharp 6 Electric Pencil Sharpener. Six because it has six uh, uh, slots to put pencils in, different sizes, and um, standard is marked with an S. It does have these great suction cups on the bottom. There are five of them, which you need because um, when this is running, it does jiggle a little. It's quiet for an electric pencil sharpener. I agree with that completely. Um, Bostitch is a good brand, and this you can get into this for under $40. It says it retails for $67. Don't pay that for it. Uh, you can get into this for around $30. And it, it's big, um, it measures, it says about 10 and a half by six by nine inches. So you will need a place to put it on your desk. And let's see, it says it's 70% 70 70 faster sharpening. Um, it'll sharpen in under four seconds. However, for artist pencils, that's not always what you want. You need precision over speed. I do use this a lot though, because I like having an electric pencil sharpener around. Uh, they say it's quiet and I will, I will do that. Uh, it says here that you can do a high volume of pencils back to back without a break. That's true. I've sharpened entire sets of pencils that don't come sharpened um, with, for their first sharpening. I have, I've used this. It does have a tamper-proof safety switch. Test that. We'll take out the, the tray and move this a little bit bigger here. 
put that in, it's not going to sharpen. But once the tray is in, then the safety mechanism is not working and you can sharpen. And that is your, uh, your noise. That's your noise level. For you, if you're wearing headphones, I'm so sorry. I hope I didn't hurt your ears there. Better. But still, it's no comparison to the AFMAT. I mean, this is going to, it'll work. It's serviceable, which is really how I use this. Um, but like I said, you know, if you're looking for a quiet pencil sharpener, that's just a good one to have around the house. This one's good. The drawback would be its size. It's, it's pretty large. Um, it does have a seven, seven year warranty. And like I said, uh, Bostitch is a good brand. Um, and again, it does have that uh, hardened steel helical cutter. Helical is what it's called. I don't know if that's the word I used before, but at any rate, this one's just a meh. It works. It's here. I'm not going to take it out of my studio. Oh my God, these suction cups are, are really firm. Now, we are all friends here, right? I think so. I think we have a pretty good relationship and we understand one another. So what I'm about to show you for the remainder of this video might rub you the wrong way. I turn the pencil, not the sharpener, on a handheld sharpener. You might be the opposite and you know what? That's okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the Prismacolor pencil sharpener first. Um, we'll go back to the guinea pigs that I promised you that I'm going to use. And these are my uh, Giorgio and Classic Color color pencils. This one has a little bit of a dull point. So let's go ahead and sharpen this one. Now the drawbacks to the Prismacolor, it's portable for sure. Oh, but okay, that doesn't stay on. That could be because of me, and this is broken also probably because of me or my husband, because when we got this, it just came packaged in a little bubble pack, a clamshell, I think you call it, uh, with a cardboard uh, facing on the back, you know, it was hanging up. Zero instructions, none whatsoever. We literally had to Google how to open this thing. So, okay, you know that I've got a track record of not being the most genius person when it comes to obvious things like the little cap on the Derwent water brush, but hey, cut me some slack. I didn't see a reason to save this much water, but you know, hey, that's okay. I figured it out. Um, and we finally figured this out. So whatever we did in our attempts to figure this out, we did break it, but that's okay. It's, I could just take this off completely, but I don't, I don't know why. Maybe as a reminder that I just did it wrong, but this lifts out. Um, it's got a good amount, um, good amount of volume capacity there to hold your shavings. You can have a, a finer point or a more obtuse point, but they both come to a really good point. So I'm going to put it in, here it is before, there's the before, and for the after we'll put it in the more obtuse point here, just twisting it around, shavings just come right out and get deposited in the little bucket, there they are. And here's the point from the obtuse angle. That's almost like uh, a newly purchased Prismacolor, like from the factory Sharpen. And then this one is your more acute angle of a point. So this is gonna shave off more of the wood and leave just a little bit more lead exposed. The difference isn't great, but it's there. That would be my preference to use the, the one on the right. And it's not a two-step, it's just an either or. So that's your Prismacolor. You could replace the blades, I guess. These are German blades, so they're um, really good quality. I'm sure they're steel if they're made in Germany. Um, easy to replace. And the drawbacks to this one, I couldn't figure out how to open it. Could be me, totally willing to take that bullet. Uh, it's big, it's big, which is great for, you know, sitting, if you're going to color like at home and you want something that you can just have conveniently sitting there, this is great. But when you're taking it with you, it's kind of big. There are other portable pencil sharpeners that take up less space. So that would be my drawback for this one. So moving on to the portable pencil sharpeners, let's talk about another one that probably everybody has or has gotten at one point in their life. This one is uh, from the Lyra set. A Lyra drawing set. Lyra is also a German company, so the blade is again made in Germany. Very high quality blade. I've never had a complaint with it. My only issue with this one, let's go to this next pencil, this light blue one here. Here's the before. It's got a little soft end on it, so it could use a little sharpening. You can sharpen it, and that's great. And it does sharpen very well. 
There you go. That's almost like the, um, the obtuse angle in the Prismacolor. So it's a great angle, but then you're left with a mess. So that I don't like. You always have to be over some kind of container. I mean, let's not be silly. I could take my candy out. I still have Christmas candy. <laughs> and um, put the shavings in a little container and then deal, deal with it that way. But then it's just an extra thing, right? Like you do have to have that little extra container. So that's my huge drawback with this one. I do keep something like this um, around for a last ditch effort in case I don't have anything else. So I think I've got one of these in just about every little uh, bag that I carry for my plein air kit. Um, I do have other ones that contain the shavings, but I have one of these as a backup just in case. So now let's take a look at the next ones. These two I wanna compare. These are pretty an even comparison these are your pencil sharpeners that you will find very common that will accommodate two different sizes of pencils. Now, this is not a two-step pencil sharpener. It just accommodates two different sizes. So, for instance, let's see. Let's look at this Kuhm first. It's made in Germany. This brand is really nice for a pencil sharpener. You'll probably hear about this one a lot. This particular one, uh, the lid no longer stays on here, and that is so disappointing because this is such a cool design how you can close it up um but it's kind of useless now because of uh for its portability anyway you close this off it keeps the shavings in and then when it's full you can just empty it out and put it back on and that is how i've used it and this no longer holds its uh holds the lid on so let's go ahead and i'll show you how it works we will start with one of our pencils here it is the before a little bit flat on the end there and it's going to fit in this over here it's it's not going to fit on this side but it will fit here so let's sharpen this one it sharpens the the core first and then the wood which is how they all work and you just kind of have to stop when you feel that no more shavings are coming off and again you get that this one actually is more like the the sharper angle on the Prismacolor. But beautiful point. Not a lot of lead of exposed is exposed, but you do have a beautiful point. So, so far we cannot beat that aft mat with the length of lead that, it, that is exposed. Just as a quick comparison reminder, here's the aft mat and here is the, uh, the Kuhm Green Portable Pencil Sharpener that we just used, the purple one. So let's take a look now. I do have a, a fatter pencil, a little bit wider in diameter. It is this Spectrum Noir, and it doesn't need to be sharpened, but I'll go ahead and use it as a demo anyway. Um, it won't fit in this little guy here, so we're going to move it over to the bigger one. And you can hear that it's working. going here there's still some wood coming off there we go so pretty good point I have no complaints this would be absolutely usable the only issue I have with this one is that the little top no longer stays on so you know I mean these things are, are meant to be very affordable and inexpensive and um, you know they do they do fall apart at the after use this Credicolor uh, Duo Pencil Sharpener is really kind of nice. It, you can get into it for just under $4.50 US dollars, and it will accommodate pencils up to 10 millimeters. So it's pretty cool. One, let's see, I've got this pencil here. It should fit in the skinny. This feels a lot sturdier than the Kuhn. The plastic feels better, feels stronger. And that's a beautiful point. I actually like this one better. Than this one I think it just has a nicer point so there's that one I like the amount of lead that's exposed and it's a very sharp point point. and let's see once again we'll get kind of a, a fatter pencil here let's see what this one does on the, the credit color here so that's better um yeah I still like this one better, and you know I don't think it's a factor that the blades are uh, are sharper on this one. They were purchased at the same time, or they got to me at the same time. This one I remember buying directly. This one I think came with some kind of art kit or something. But at any rate, um, I like this one. The 
the credit color is um, they're a decent brand I think they take some things that are white labeled but I've, I've been pretty pleased with some of their products that I've had so of these two size pencil sharpeners I think the credit color one is better let me just empty the shavings real quick and let's see where these blades are made they don't say no name blades so I say I would say when you're looking for one, I would avoid this one because it's it's not gonna last. It's not gonna last. But the best, the best handheld pencil sharpener I have. I feel like angels should sing. This one is by Kuhn, which is that German company I love. This is the automatic long point pencil sharpener. It's super affordable and it is genius. Okay, it is a two-step pencil sharpener. Now, what it's the holes are the same size, not like on these where the holes are different sizes. So it's meant for just uh, the standard eight millimeter, I think that's standard, uh, pencil size. So let me show you what it does. I'll take the lid off. Now here's here's a disadvantage: the hinge has broken, so the lid just comes off. But that makes it easier for me to show this to you. We're gonna put it in hole number one, which is marked right here with a number one. And as you can see, the, let me get my little tweezer point here. The, the lead, the core is beyond the blade, just a little bit. So let's see what happens when we turn that to sharpen it. Okay, see how wonky that makes the tip of that blade? But really, that's a plus because because what you're getting is you're getting this much blade ex or excuse me this much core exposed. Now, let me empty this out. Now we'll go into hole number two on this side and we'll refine that core. Do you see how the core stops right here where the shavings are coming out? It doesn't go all the way to the end. And we're going to refine that tip. There we have it. Look at that. That is decent. So here is this one compared to the Aftmat, which is the yellow. And then we have a uh, Derwent, which will be this orange one here. So look, I'm gonna put the Derwent over next to that one. So look at how close that is to the Derwent. I mean, if you are going to fall in love with a pencil sharpener that's in your studio and be sad that you don't have it if you're away from your desk anywhere and you need to sharpen a pencil, this one is the one I highly, highly, highly recommend. There's more to it though. Let me show you. These two blades here, they are for sharpening drafting pencils. I don't have any. So this red one is just a little bit bigger, so you would put your uh, the lead from your drafting pencil in there. Let's try it with this one that we sharpened with the Aftmat. Oh, that does work. Look at that. That's You can really get that back to a very fine point, which is just kind of what the, uh, the sandpaper does in the Aftmat pencil sharpener. But if you're on the go, you can really get that sharp. Now, it won't fit in this side, but... This is another option instead of the, uh, the sandpaper that's inside that Aftmat right? Like you could use that little bit to resharpen that tip. So that's another huge bonus of this one. And we're not done. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of those knife salesmen in the mall. <laughs> it comes as blades. Let me see if I can get these out so you guys can see because, yeah, two blades. Two blades, they are Kuhn branded blades, German steel, and I don't think you can get replacement blades for these. You might just have to buy a new sharpener, but this is not a big investment at all. And it does have that automatic stop so that when you put your pencil in, it's you can't over sharpen it. It's gonna automatically stop it right there. Lots of really great features to this one. Let me put this blade back in here so I don't lose it. The only drawback that I found to this one is the hinge broke. But to be honest, I kind of like it better as it's not a hinge because it's easier for me to just be able to take the entire lid off. And when I take it with me, I just put a rubber band around it. So this one, hands down, my favorite portable pencil sharpener. 
So there you have it. That is my take on all of these pencil sharpeners that I own. I mean, I think I have another one like this that's metal, but it's the same deal. I mean, you know, you, you run your pencil sharpener and then what do you do with the shavings? So, you know, what can I say? Here's my, here are my guys. Let's look at it in order again of preference. Let's start with these little handheld ones. This one, great as a spare. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Maybe a two out of 10. It does have a good point though. So maybe, maybe a three, but the shavings that go all over, that just is annoying to me because you have to have another thing to make it work. You have to have a little container. Uh, two size barrels. I recommend the Credit Color over the Coom because this plastic is cheap and it cracks very easily. This one feels a lot sturdier and it is in fact working out to be better. In the category, of the two different uh, two different tips, Prismacolor. I love your pencils, but your pencil sharpener fails on so many levels. I mean, I okay, that's not fair. It doesn't fail. It's just come on, don't. What is this plastic piece out here for? Is it? It's just style. It it serves no purpose. I spent so much time trying to open this thing up like this. You would think, wouldn't you, that this had a point? It does not have a point. There's no there's no purpose to this. It's just style. The shape, it fits in your hand well. I mean, that's a plus, but it's enormous. It's hard to carry with you. And all you do is lift this off. I, like I said, we broke it trying to figure it out. I thought, what am I doing wrong? And there were no instructions. So, I mean, they probably think, who needs instructions for this? Well, and does, yoo-hoo. So, anyway... This one's just a meh. Here's my gold standard for the uh, for your hand pencil sharpening. I'm gonna go with my top two are the Automatic Long Point by Coom and the Afmat. Here are the grand winners. Yay! And I'm gonna go sharpen the rest of my pencils. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.